Hi everybody, um, thank you for your patience to get out the 2019 um, shoe list. I do the shoe list and I do the updates twice a year. Typically I do it in February and then I'll follow it up again um, this summer in June. Um, shoes typically start to change around November and they go all the way through until this time of year. And so I kind of wait till all the shoes have made their way into our local um, store here in town so I have time to look at them. And then they start coming out, another wave of shoes changes in the spring and goes into June. And so we will we'll be updating the shoe list again um, in June of this year if there's any changes. Usually it's not a big change, but um, just so you guys are aware. I just kind of want to let you guys know a little bit of the history of how this shoe list evolved from our clinic. And it started back in around 2007 with a patient of mine um, who came in. She was a dental hygienist here in town. And she was having a lot of knee pain um, when she was running. And for those of you that are postural restora restoration trained physical therapists, um, she was neutral with their PRI test. Um, her list scores were four out of five as we had gone through treatment. And she would come in and she would feel great um, here in the clinic when we would do exercises and activities. Um, integrating her frontal plank, getting her quad and her glute to integrate together. Yet when she would go out and run, her feet would still, I mean, her knee would still bother her. So I finally asked her one day, I go, is this the same shoe that you're coming in to see me in after work? Is this the same shoe you're going out and running with? And she's like, oh no, Glory, I run in a different, I run in a different brand of shoe. So she went home and got that shoe and brought it back to the clinic at, the next day and we looked at it and she was not neutral with their PRI objective test with that shoe. So that shoe was not a good shoe for her body to help her to integrate her neck, her trunk, and her pelvis. So after that, we became a lot clinically aware here at the Horesca Clinic with the influence that shoes had on our physical therapy posture restoration train program with our patients. For patients who are watching this video, I want to let you know that is very important when you try on the shoes, even though it's a shoe on my shoe list or our shoe list here at the clinic, doesn't mean it's a great shoe for you. So are there some criteria that I want you guys to look at when you go to look at a shoe? The first rule of any shoe is that it's gotta feel comfortable on your foot. It doesn't matter what your PRI objective tests are or what your physical therapist might tell you. First of all, the shoe's got to feel comfortable on your foot and you should not feel like you have to break your shoe in. Rule number two is I want you, and when you're in your store looking for shoes, I want you to put your weight on your left leg and bring your left arm forward if you're on your left leg. Pick up your right foot, and can you feel your whole entire foot on the floor? Can you feel heel, arch, and toe? And if you got on your right foot, can you get on your right foot, bring your right arm forward, pick up your left foot? Can you feel heel, arch, and toe? After you get that and you have your shoes that A, feel comfortable for you, and B, you feel like the whole, you can feel your whole foot on the floor, take that shoe in to your physical therapist who does posture restoration and have them evaluate you to ensure that you are neutral with PRI objective test. For the physical therapist or healthcare practitioners that are watching this video, it is important uh, that you look at all PRI objective testing, especially the neck. A lot of times your patients may look like that they have objective tests that are neutral in the pelvis, but sometimes the neck may not be in a neutral state. Just like we want to have a foot and ankle that can wobble a little bit, you also want to have a neck that can wobble. And your feet will let you know if your neck is locked up, that shoe is not going to be good for your patient. The foot and the ankle and the neck are BFFs. So for those of you that do PRI testing, thank you for looking at the addu adduction drop test, the extension drop test, and other PRI um, objective testing that you look at, but please don't forget to look at the neck with your patients when you're looking at good footwear. The other thing I wanna make sure is that with some of your patients and their history, if you look at the shoe, we like shoes that have a good heel counter because that calcaneus or your heel bone needs to be steady. When we go to walk, your heel should hit the ground, your foot goes on the outside, and it should be able to ro pronate in to be able to push off of your big toe. So 
I heel strike. I'm gonna land on the outside of my foot, but you've gotta have a stable heel in order for the midfoot to supinate and pronate during the gait cycle. So it should roll out, your foot should be able to roll in, and you should be able to push off of your big toe. We don't want your patients to push off their big toe joint. So some of the basic criteria that we look for in all the shoes that are on the shoe list is we like shoes where the heel counter does not collapse in, but this is steady and sturdy. We like shoes that have been easily at the toe box because this is a normal bend of your toe joint. We also like heels that are symmetrical both on the inside and the outside. And we like shoes that don't have a lot of lateral heel give or give on the outside of the heel that is pretty sturdy. That's some of the basic criteria that we look for. And you'll see all demonstrations of that criteria on the shoe list has been on here for many years. There are other things that we look at from a neurological standpoint and a PRI perspective with shoes and footwear when we put this shoe list together. Last summer, you'll, you guys will have known in 2018, I tried to categorize shoes um, to help you guys out, to help your patients out with what patients you might have come in by putting shoes in different categories. We have a neurosensory category that helps your patients that might have good cushioning to get good feedback from the floor if you have someone that's having difficulty getting grounding or sensing the floor. You have a heel stability category for maybe those eight, patients that have had a continuous ankle sprains where they roll their ankle, which means that they might need a really good heel counter to keep that calcaneus in the right position so they can work their midfoot independent of that calcaneus. Remember, we don't want the calcaneus or the heel bone and the midfoot to roll out and roll in together. The heel should be steady and that midfoot should be able to roll out, supinate and pronate and to push off the big toe with the glutes. So I hope that those dip, these different categories will make sense to you. The shoes that are underlined for this winter are shoes that we feel might work well with um, PRI orthotics um, that Dr. Coffin might make, or maybe your local podiatrist might make that have PRI principles and science behind it. If shoes are in bold, they're shoes that we really like and utilize here in the Horeska Clinic. Now this might change clinically as we go through the next few months as we're kind of trying to evolve with the changes that the shoes are with what we see clinically. I might put out a new video, gosh we thought we really liked this shoe but in the clinic as we're working with it with patients we may not like it anymore or gosh this was a shoe that was really overlooked that has been really powerful for, for us in the clinic. With that being said I'd like to update you with a few shoes that we have really liked here in the clinic that I think you guys might find useful with your um, patients out in the clinical world with your PRI activity. The ASUS Cumulus has been a really good shoe for us uh, with some of our patients that have had a history of um, ankle instability or they have a history of having a lot of um, ankle sprains or severe ankle sprain. ASUS by far has the best heel counter because that heel counter vertically is, is um, longer and if you look here, it's a lot more narrow than if you look here, if you look at the New Balance 1080, you're going to see that this is a lot more narrow than the um, 1080 is. So this is going to really help to secure the calcaneus so people don't feel like they're going to fall off a cliff when they walk or over lateralize on the outside of their foot to really help get a good calcaneal support. So the um, ASICS Cumulus has been a really good um, shoe for us, or any kind of ASICS shoe might be good for people that have um, heel stability. A second shoe that I'd like to talk to you about, both the Brooks Adrenaline and the Brooks Ravenna have had really good um, upgrades. And both of these shoes, um, with their new design of 2019, have a guide rail system that goes around the heel and comes up medially to the arch. And the Brooks Adrenaline is like a big sister to the Brooks Ravana. So if you have a really small petite patient that's 100 pounds, the Brooks Ravana might work better for them. But the Brooks Adrenaline, I feel, is gonna be a really good um, shoe for those people that need 
a guide rail system around that heel and a medial arch support to really help to get that repronation or frontal plane. It also has a really good heel counter. It's quite, not quite as supportive um, as, the cum as the cumulus shoe is, but it still has a really good heel counter. And with that guide rail system, it still might work really well for some of your patients that need a good heel counter if they have a history of ankle sprains. The other thing about the adrenaline that's a little bit different than the cumulus is that the cushioning and the feedback you might get from the floor for some of your patients that also need help with neurosensory grounding or the ability to sense their entire foot on the floor. So the adrenaline is a shoe that we're kind of keeping our ears to the pavement. Um, this shoe just came out, so we've just been working with it in the clinic for the last month or um, three weeks or so, and we really like it. My only thing I kind of would like your guys' feedback for is that I feel like the toe box might be a little narrow, and I like toe boxes that are a little wide so you feel like you have five toes. So this might work well for some of your patients. Some of your patients might feel like their toes are a little crowded, and I want your patients to feel like they have five toes on their foot, not one big toe. So keep a lookout for that, but some of the benefits with the guide rail system and that medial arch I really like. Another shoe um, that I will talk to you about is the New Balance 1080. And this shoe clinically was a really powerful shoe for us the last couple of years, especially with retraining patients um, to help them to sense the floor with the foam and the mid um, foot guidance that it provided. Well, you're going to notice on the new shoe list that the New Balance 1080 version 9 is not on our shoe list. And we're really 50-50. Um, some of our patients are still having good luck with it. Some of our patients are not. And what they did is that they took this guide rail or this midfoot guidance and you have one solid piece on the upper part of the foot and it comes back here so we're not getting as much midfoot guidance with the midfoot that we were getting in the version 6, 7, and 8. The version 9 got rid of this upper piece on um, the shoe, and we just don't feel like we have as much midfoot guidance and control. The other thing with the amount of the cost of this shoe, we love the foam feedback for neurosensory patients, and it still might be a good shoe to help your patients for retraining but I don't, long term, the shoe doesn't hold up. It gets compressed really quickly, and these shoes need to be replaced every two to three months. It's not a long-lasting shoe. But for retraining purposes, for physical therapy, it still might be a good shoe, but we're kind of iffy on it, so I didn't feel confident putting it on our shoe list um, out to the masses as an umbrella that this is a great shoe for you know, a, a vast majority of patients. So I just want to let you know that's why that shoe came off the shoe list this year. The last shoe I want to talk about is the New Balance 860 version 9. And this shoe um, I feel like has good cushioning on the bottom of it. It's not as much cushioning as the New Balance 1080, but you're still going to get good feedback from the floor. Um, I feel like neurosensory wise. And I also feel like I get good um, feedback from the midfoot if, with some of your patients that need guidance with how to help repronate during the gait cycle during the mid-stance phase of gait. And this shoe has worked really well for some of my patients that, that need that guidance or need more of a sensory feedback because it's a little bit more narrow here in the midfoot to help provide a little bit of guidance. There is a piece you're going to see here, but it's more for looks. It's really not a guidance, but how this is narrow and how it fits the midfoot, I really like to get some of that midfoot supination pronation feedback with the shoe. So this is another shoe you might have good luck, luck with. This is a New Balance 860 version 9. So two shoes we're really looking at. Uh, the three shoes we really are liking here in the clinic is a New Balance 860 version 9 the Brooks Adrenaline version um, 19 and the um, A6 Cumulus depending on our patient and their history. I hope these updates help. Um, I love it that you guys look forward to the shoe list every year. Just a, a kind reminder that this is a shoe list from the Horesca Clinic and we would like you to leave the Horesca Clinic recommended shoe list for 2019 at the top of the handout. If you want to add your clinic logo above that, you sure can. It is copyrighted. But we'd love it that you guys 
um, integrate with us professionally with posture restoration and the science behind PRI to help us all integrate together clinically with utilizing the shoe list. Thanks and have a great day.